Are you looking at the art? Good, I've done my job. I'll talk more about the art behind me in a little bit, but I wanted to introduce myself and tell you what gave birth to Lost in Composition and what it is. My name is Paul Drinkwine. Yes, the last name's real. I love my last name. I was born with it. I'm an art collector. My husband and I have been collecting art for more than a couple decades. I'm not going to tell you exactly how long. We have a good collection. I love our collection. It's not extensive. It's a very humble collection. When you say art collections, you immediately think billions of dollars. Not true. Not the case. Let me tell you. Um, I love our collection. It's a very diverse collection. Most pieces in our collection, I would assume, you, most people would not buy. Maybe they buy these. Anyways, um, so we cl started collecting a couple decades ago, and as we started collecting, we became friends with some of the artists that we were collecting and our network within the arts community in Seattle expanded. And I fell in love with the community and I began to really respect the artists and what they were doing and what they were, the impact that they were making on the world, just making the world a better place through the visual arts um, and through music as well. And then all of a sudden, COVID hit. And I sat back and I watched the world fall apart and zeroed in on the artists because I knew artists would be impacted more than the rest of us. And they were. Performers immediately lost their jobs. Artists, no unemployment benefits for a long time. I was wondering what I could do. All it was was me locked in my own home. What could I do? So I started a social media campaign and I started posting an artist a day, every day. That was a lot of work, but it took off. My social media feed exploded and Sales were happening. I wasn't brokering any of the sales. I wasn't making any money off of this. I was just networking and being of service, exposing, getting people exposure, giving artists exposure. And it felt really, really good, but it was a lot of work. And so after artists started getting unemployment benefits and things, I use this word very loosely, after things started to normalize a little bit, I started pulling back on the social media posts and eventually they went away. But my service had had such an impact on me that I knew I wanted to continue doing this in one way or another. I just wasn't sure how yet. And I'm of that age where you start thinking about retirement, too. What are you going to do in retirement? Well, I live in Seattle, and my garden's small, and it rains a lot, so I'm not going to be gardening, and I'm definitely not going to be sitting on the sofa channel surfing. That's just not my style. Probably going to be involved in the arts and collecting one way or another. So why not do a blog? and feature artists. So I sat on that for a while and then I realized that wasn't enough. The reason why it wasn't enough for me is because I wanted to be able to literally introduce an artist to people. Whether it's an artist that somebody may be interested in or maybe they've collected their art for decades and never met the artist. Being able to put a face to the art, if you will, and a story to the art. So what about a YouTube channel? People make lots of money off of YouTube. Yeah, that might work. No, 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 that won't work. Because why won't it work? You're looking at this art behind me, right? On video? 
it's not that good. I mean, it's good. I got a good camera. I got lights back there that you can't see. I'm trying to make it look really good, but it's not a good image of it. I may or may not have images of these on my blog. If I don't, I'll throw one up. Trust me, video does not work when you're talking about art. It may work for sculptures, but it does not work for paintings and other forms of art. You really need a still image to see it. And if you think the still images are good, trust me, those are nothing once you've seen it with your bare eyes. Naked eyes are always the best for art. So what about a blog that has the still images and a YouTube channel, and then I could embed the videos on the blog? That would work. So I gave that a shot, called it Lost in Composition, called them both. Lostincomposition.com is the website. It's also, it's my blog basically, but it's, it's designed to look more like a website. And what I'm posting there, what I'm doing there is, there's two different things I've been doing. I've been posting blog posts without videos, which I'm doing less and less of. And then I'm posting blog posts with videos. Now, if I'm post, if you enjoy seeing the posts on Lost in Composition, what I recommend you do is go to lostincomposition.com, drop down to the bottom, and give me your email address. Put your email address in the bottom of the page. You'll get notifications maybe twice a month because I'm not really going to be posting more than that. Uh, this is a slow, very slow moving train. It's a lot of work. Um, my husband's been great, but let me tell you, I've got two full-time jobs right now. One's my primary job, my day job, and one's lost in composition. One pays the bills, one is a huge money suck. <laughs> So that's what it is. And my husband just has just been wonderful with this. But yeah, so why would you want to get notifications of the blog posts if you're seeing stuff on YouTube? Because you won't get notifications of any kind of text posts. And there's also, there was an instance where right after I launched this, we had some family members come out on very short notice and I was like, oh no, I'm not going to be posting anything. What am I going to do? So I did a post of on vacation and I posted a video of myself that I took swimming in open water with sharks in Bora Bora. Um, so anyone who has signed up on the website got notification of that. The video, because Lost in Composition on YouTube is about art, I didn't make that public, that video public of the Swimming with Sharks. Uh, it's just not art. It's not meant for Lost in Composition YouTube channel. So you get to see videos of me, uh, not me, but videos I took swimming in the wild open water with sharks um, if you're subscribed there. Now, YouTube, if you want to subscribe on YouTube, which I really encourage you to do, because the reason why I'm encouraging you to do is for notifications, as well as the fact that it does help me build a reputation on YouTube. Maybe eventually I will make money off this. I don't know if that'll ever happen. Don't really care, but would be nice. It'd be nice to pay for all this gear and the travel that I'm about to do um, instead of have it come directly from my pocket. <laughs> but anyways, um, so YouTube. I'm going to put a video down below on what subscribing in to a YouTube channel entails, how to do it, and what that means. One thing that that video doesn't include, though, is notifications. So notifications only happen 
if you subscribe and then after you subscribe there will be a little bell that appears to the right of the subscribe button if you click that you'll get notifications when I drop new videos now why would you want to do that because say I interview your favorite artist favorite artist ever you just love this artist post it on the blog you get notification because you signed up for notification on the blog and then you just love that video and then about two weeks later I get around to posting a studio tour on the same page on the blog you're not going to get notification because it's not a new post I simply went in and edited the post and added that video however if you signed up on YouTube as well you will get notification that that video dropped so that's how you get notifications from both and I really encourage you to do that um, now there is a catch if you're watching this on the blog right now you might be wondering how do I sign up in YouTube you see that little down there it says watching YouTube click that and that will take you to YouTube and then the subscribe button is down below and if you want to figure out more about subscribing on YouTube watch the video below on the blog it's a great video I really like that guy so that's that's how you get the blogs and the YouTube notifications and how you keep up on both um, and like I said probably about two posts a month I don't anticipate ever doing more than that unless I retire and really end up loving this or if this takes off and can pay the bills which I doubt it will but you know there's a dreaming that's nice so I want to touch base on diversity because being a gay man diversity is huge to me I know the value of diversity we all talk about it and I know a bunch of people's eyes just rolled in the back of their head but you know what I've been talked over in corporate America I've been talked down to in corporate America I've had my ideas hijacked I'll say an idea in the meeting and they'll be like no 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 and then four days later just like clockwork I could always count this was a previous team this is not my current team previous team four days like clockwork you know I got an idea thanks you just stole my idea that I said four days ago and you were like no 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 and I know diversity helps mitigate some of that because I don't like being talked over or talked down to or having my ideas hijacked so when I see it happening to somebody else I say something and I also know that when I walk into an art gallery I am going to see predominantly paintings or artwork by white people yes I said white people and I'm gonna let that fester so if you have been watching my videos you've probably noticed that I have tried to be diverse so far with the people that I'm covering I'm going to make a commitment to you my viewers to continue to do so now like I said I walk into a gallery I'm pretty sure that every that most artists there are going to be white not that I have a thing against white people I'll be completely honest with you the bulk of our collection is done by white people not necessarily straight white people and not necessarily straight white males the bulk of our collection is by women by choice I would really love to be able to expand our collection to represent a true diversity of people and I need your help with that I need you 
if you know of people of color, even maybe blue people. Yes, there are blue people. I'll put a link to blue people down below. Blue people, trans people, non-gender conforming people, queer people, straight people, um, funny people, I don't care. And if they are white, I don't care either. I don't discourage that. But I really want to be able to provide my viewers with a diverse group of people. Likewise, I would like to expound on what I'm doing and cover a more diverse medium than painting. I would like to include photography, pottery, ceramics, whatever. You know, um, if you know of a good paper mache artist, send them my way. You can either email me or post in the comments. I'd love it. So, that's pretty much it. I really want to thank you for tuning in. And before I go, I said I'd talk about this wall behind me. This is Kelly Talbot. She's kind of a local legend in the Seattle art community. Um, I love her work, obviously. I'm standing in front of multiple pieces, and you can't see that there's more of them down there. And there's more of them up there, upstairs. But anyways, um, I love her work. I don't think that I will ever be able to interview her. I love Kelly. She's a wonderful human being. She's one of a couple of artists who have told me that this is not what they, that it gives them anxiety sitting in front of a camera. Trust me, it gives me anxiety too. I'm getting much better about it. I never thought I'd be doing anything like this. But anyways, I wanted to talk about Kelly Talbot. She's a wonderful artist, as you can tell. Um, these are all oil on canvas. I know that one person I know I had shown pictures to and actually thought that the neon tubes were real neon tubes that lit up and the background was painted. That's not the case. It's all paint. Um, on canvas. Love her work. Now, collecting. When you're talking about collecting, there are fundamentally two types of collections. There's horizontal and vertical. This would be a vertical collection. What a vertical collection is, is it's when you collect multiple of the same, which would be like multiple of the same artists. Like, these are all Kelly Talbot. This would be a vertical collection. If you were a car collector and you only collected Corvettes, that would be a vertical collection. Horizontal is when you collect a lot of different artists. And there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, I won't go there. Uh, we have primarily a horizontal collection. We do have a lot of different artists in our collection, but we usually collect more than one piece by an artist. Now, I have a friend who's got a fantastic collection and it is pretty much horizontal. Lots of different art, lots of different mediums, lots of different artists. Um, it's a matter of taste, it's a matter of preference. He can't wrap his head around buying multiple pieces by the same artist. Obviously, I can. So, that's enough about the wall. I'll step aside and I'll let you take a look and enjoy for a minute.